Oh, it's been uh, ne expected, to be honest. Uh, the amount of discussion that's uh, surrounded my comments that have been highlighted in the media, notwithstanding the fact that I was the last person to contribute in a seven-hour debate, which started off with persons giving their own personal testimonies. Now, we have to understand in the country, beyond all the hoopla, from a parliamentary perspective, I think both sides of the House were not under the whip. So when you're under the whip, it means that you must toe the party line, and the things that you say usually are considered to be a position of the party. Now, on all questions of morality, whether it's sexual orientation, whether it's marijuana, or any other item on morality, I myself as leader, following in the tradition of all leaders in the PLP, removes the whip from our parliamentarians. And that means that they are free to express themselves in whatever way they so desire, and that whatever they say would not be uh, the position of the Progressive Labour Party, because you can speak your conscience freely. Now, if I can extend that to my colleagues, as the Premier extended it to his colleagues, then certainly the person who extends it should also have the privilege of also speaking within that context. And that's what I did. And so, regardless if I did not mention my daughter, I, I suspect by mentioning my father, the headlines would have been out of abuse. And if I had not mentioned my father, it would have been something else that I said in that debate that would have been the headline. The reason for it is because obviously the media, some media, and the One Bermuda Alliance are aching for a way to deflect from their 14 months of, of deception, and uh, especially surrounding the Jack Gate issue, but other issues also. And so that's what's happened. But in terms of the feedback within the community, you have some people who are naturally concerned, and I understand that, and others who are very supportive. But I hope that in my raising of it, or it being highlighted, can launch a more deeper discussion in terms of health care provision and the introduction of uh, more alternative medicines, and there's alternative medicine providers in the country today given more attention by us in government because I feel prevention is better than cure. And if you can apply uh, alternative holistic health techniques to heal you, then certainly it can reduce the cost of our health care system. And so instead of focusing on the political, it's time for us to have a higher degree of maturity because health care, which I described, in the debate surrounding medical cannabis is vitally important and it transcends politics. Do you feel with all the reaction to the comment that maybe your message was lost? I don't think my message was lost because those who have ears to hear, they heard, right? But unfortunately, I think it distracted from the CRC report. Uh, the, the members of the CRC done something that very few people have been able to do in the time period that they had. I was on the Bermuda Independence Commission, and it took us almost a year to produce a report. The CRC, within a matter of a few months, produced an absolutely comprehensive report that is not only worthy of debate and discussion, but is worthy of the attention of the government to see what recommendations can be implemented. So unfortunately, uh, because of the nature of politics in Bermuda and the need to deflect, uh, the, the excellent work done by all the members of the CRC who deserve the total amount of credit has been pushed to the side, and I think Bermuda in the end will lose out for it. Looking back, do you think it would have done anything different? Always you can look back in hindsight. I mean, earlier today when we were speaking about immigration, I used terminology, for instance, of describing what I see, uh, what appears, the one Bermuda Alliance's relationship towards the voting public in this country, all voters. And in trying to be uh, diplomatic and parliamentary, I use terminology like, we are leaders of the night and they're the managers. But then at the end, I, I said, you know, some open legism, which the speaker asked me to withdraw, withdraw, which I did, because it was on parliamentary language in every way. And, uh, and so when you look at that, you have to go back and say, okay, you know, maybe I should have not been so personal with my life, right, knowing that people are out there looking for ammunition to attack me and the Progressive Labour Party anyway, you know. Uh, and so going forward in the future, I, I think I have to be 
respect my own privacy and my family's privacy. Notwithstanding the fact that everyone got up and gave personal testimonies. Because that was the nature of the debate, you know, on Friday. It wasn't antagonistic across the floor. Everyone humbly and maturely had an open discussion. And I merely participated and, and gave my contribution based on the topic at hand, which was cannabis reform, but in particular what's been highlighted is the medical use of cannabis. And so hopefully uh, we can, can, and can look at it in a much mature way. For, for my part, I have no regrets in opening up discussion of the potential benefits of medical cannabis to people, and also I take it a step further and, and like to drive the discussion towards alternative medicine as a whole. Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, if you're not curing a disease, then you're actually not correctly treating the disease. And for some reason, there are a lot of people in Western medicine who have the concept that there is no cure for a lot of diseases. And as far as I'm concerned, that just feeds into this cradle-to-grave cycle of profiteering at the expense of people's sufferation. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care if you're my enemy, all right? If, if you're not in good health and I have the opportunity to share some of my own knowledge that I have cultivated and experienced in my own life, then I'll certainly share it with you if that can allow you to restore yourself to health. Some of the reaction to the comments made that night has your, for your resignation and has expressed concerns for the viability of the PLP party moving forward. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on the resignation, the call for the resignation, and have you had any feedback from the party and do you have any concerns that what you said might affect this viability? Isn't it ironic that people are calling for my resignation by me standing up and giving a contribution on the topic and being honest and forthright and telling the truth. Yet for a few weeks ago, we had the Premier and the AG who had to resign for the complete opposite. That's not telling the truth, that's not being transparent, that's not being honest. Yet when we stand up in this house, the one thing that we all demand to be addressed by is the title honorable. Okay? We demand it in this house to be addressed by the term honorable. Well, you tell me what honorable means. It means being honest. Okay, so to ask me to resign for being honorable in the midst of a party that still were expecting resignations over being dishonorable, to me is a contradiction. And so it's not something that I would take under consideration in any which way because I stand in, in, in the truth. Has much reaction from other party members? Yes. There's been some reaction, good and bad, but I hope, and it's something that, again, when it comes to the party, everything's internal, you know, and of course, persons will have, within and outside the party, sometimes will have an issue with the terms and the words that I use. You know, not only am I honest or brutally frank, right, but sometimes I use uh, words that paint a picture, you know, uh, that's very explicit. And, and as a leader, I understand that at times, uh, words have to be used in a manner which can reach everyone. You know, and that's something that I have to learn. But at the same time, at the same time, uh, again, I use my experience. And as a, a responsible father, I thought that I would share that experience because there's a lot of parents in this country, right, whose children are suffering from asthma. And who, really, who, when you're looking at your child suffering from the most fundamental aspect of life itself, being able to breathe, you mean to tell me that if there is a way that, because the people are saying, other scientists, or some scientists and charities are saying that there's no cure for it, okay? Now, you, how could you give hope to people when they see their child suffering from being able to breathe and telling them there's no cure? All right, so for me, if there is something that I can offer, or anyone can offer, in terms of knowledge to help someone, then I'm going to share it. Asthma can also be treated, and other bron bronchial or, or, or lung-related diseases. There are herbs that grow in this country wild, like mullein and elderberry bush, okay, that you can use to treat respiratory disease and respiratory congestion. And it grows wild and it's free, right outside our backyards. Why shouldn't I let the people know 
and remind the elders in this country who used to take those very same herbal medicines to treat themselves before the advent of pharmacists. Why shouldn't I let the people know that there's another way to restore yourself and your family back to health? Now, if I got crucified for that, then I guess, you know, it's not me that has to look in the mirror. People have to look in the mirror.